Oh, lovely people. Good afternoon. It's been a while. I think all I've been feeding you guys is the post from the, from the camp and uh, nothing else that just comes from me. All right. So I'm going to be very quick. I'm actually at the stop where we are meeting with the campers, the guys that you're going to the camp with. But I thought, let me just share this quickly with you guys, you know, on few things that are a cause of a divorce. You know, when you have a car and the car is about to give you problems, what the car will do, it will give you an orange warning sign. And after that warning sign, if you ignore it, it's going to go on a red sign. Now, when it's on the red sign, it simply means now that the situation is getting out of hand. And if it's not taken care of, it just becomes critical. Just like a woman before giving birth, you know, the labor pains and then eventually the water breaks. And when the water breaks now, it becomes a bit of an issue because we know that this person has to be at the hospital. So same applies. You know, most of you, if you were to look at your relationship, you would see that um, where you at now is as a result of the things that you have done or things that you haven't done in the past that resulted to where you are now. And the only way for you to be able to fix it is to recognize, you know, your footsteps and everywhere you might have gone wrong. All right. So uh, in most cases, you might find that where your relationship or your marriage is at, it's either the devil is at the door or the devil has entered already. Now, the big question is, what do you do about that? And is it something that you can be able to save? Well, I have good news for you. If you're still staying together, if you're still in the same house, it's a good sign that you can be able to salvage, you know, whatever is left of your of your marriage. I'm going to give you 10 things quickly that would be a sign that you are heading for a courtroom, you know, a divorce court. And I hope that this will help you to be able to fix things now before they get out of hand, you know, because nothing just happens randomly. You can't say, no, this person woke up and said, no, I want divorce. It takes time. It's because of the things that have been piled up and piled up and piled up. And then eventually a person says, you know what? I'm hard fall. I can't take this anymore. It's way more than what I can take. The first thing that is normally a problem is when there is all of a sudden more negative criticism, you know, from your partner or you criticizing your partner a lot. Uh, it should just tell you that you are in a space where your tolerance levels have dropped a lot and you need to do something about it. There's nothing much that is good that you can say about your partner. There's nothing good that you can be able to say about your partner without you dwelling or highlighting the negative things. So the minute you start finding yourself criticizing him a lot or her a lot, you should know that the devil is at the door or the devil has entered already, okay? That's the first thing. The second one is when now you start talking mine and his and hers, and it's all about, you know, um, my car, my side of the bed, my this, his this, has this. And then there's a problem there because it means that one of you is pulling on the other side and you are not pulling to the same side because now you start seeing the divisions and you start seeing my things and her things and so forth. All right. So that is just um, the first two things. And then the other one is when you find yourself Finding more reasons to put your marriage or your relationship on hold in the name of either growing, I mean, raising kids, you know, going to school for studying and anything else that you might find as a reason to be able to ignore your marriage. You know, it could even be work where you find yourself spending more time at, um, 
at work than you have to be excited about going home. All right. So that is the third thing. And then the first, the fourth one is giving your partner leftovers. You know, you know that you're supposed to love your partner unconditionally, but you find yourself just having other things that are more of a priority to you than you prioritizing your marriage and your partner above everything else. And then that becomes a little bit of a problem. Okay. So, the minute those things, they come and they creep in into the relationship, you should know that there's a problem. You should know that there are things that are coming in that are not supposed to be coming in, things that are holding you back that are not supposed to be holding you back. The minute you start having a prolonged grudges, where you start competing with your partner, where you start finding yourself now um revenging about every small thing like no pastor x i'm doing this because my partner is doing that i'm doing this because he's doing that and then there's a problem it means that the devil is inside sometimes you might find yourself you know prioritizing your feelings more than your commitment now the big question is what commitment did you make to your partner when you guys first met and when you guys married all right and those commitment um are they have they changed if they've changed, why have they changed? Have they changed for the better? If they've changed for the better, it means that you have improved. If you used to love your partner at 90%, now you are at 92%. That becomes a bit of a, a good thing. But it's a bad thing now if you love your partner 20% less than what you were loving your partner before. All right? And then the other point is when you start now making decisions all by yourself without consulting your partner. Whether it's a, it's a small decision or it's a big decision, but the bottom line is you start now not involving and including your partner in your decision-making process. And then that becomes a bit of a problem because it means that now there will be a lot of arguments about why did you do this? Why did you do this? Because it's much easier when you have made the decisions on your own for your partner to find them wrong, to find them not working for everyone else. Because remember, you didn't cover every single corner of it. Okay. So, and then the other one is when now you start using the D word a lot. You know, everything to you is about divorce. No, let's rather divorce. You know, I don't see this marriage working. I think we are better off apart and all that. The minute you start planting that, and there's a lot of that talk in the relationship, you should know that, you know what, the devil now is not just in the house, is right in between you guys, is right in the house, and you are no longer alone in this. So you need to be careful of that because it means that now you'll have to work twice as much three times and so forth and then the last two is when now you not show up you never show up in public together that becomes a problem even when you are together you are, could be in a party in a function the other one is on the other side and then the other one is on the other side and you know we have to speculate you would say are they a couple or what there's a problem right there and then when that happens, it means that the other one is starting to be more ashamed of the other and you don't find any joy. And then the last one is when now you start having friends that are outside both of you. You start having new friends of your own that your partner doesn't know about. And all of a sudden now you spend too much time with these people and you spend a lot of time with them as an escape. Then there's a problem. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. I need you to digest it. Think about it. Your relationship, where it is now, where are you? What is holding you together? What is making your relationship to be what it is? If, for instance, you guys are not where you were or where you're supposed to be, the question is, why are you not there? What have you done? What is your role? Without pointing a finger to your partner, what have you done, when? for you guys to be where you at now. I'm going to leave it at that. And I need you to think about it. And if possible, please do share with me. Send me a WhatsApp, send me an email, whatever, just to share why are you where you at at the moment. God bless.